YouTube. I wanted to do a quick video today about a solar telescope and one of the most affordable solar telescopes out there and one that's actually really impressive. Solar equipment and impressive when it comes to price, they only work when the price is really high and usually uh, expensive equipment uh, is impressive. The cheap equipment is not as good. But today, that's an exception. So instead of like talking about the Daystar Quantum 0.6 Angstrom uh, filter, which is incredible, I'm going to be talking about something like this. This is the Lunt 40 millimeter solar telescope. It, it is actually impressively well built. The helical focuser is better than what I expected. The actual mechanics of it are very, very good. Um, even the solar finder works really well. The sun will basically light up this little circle when you get to it. Of course, don't put the camera in front of it uh, because you won't see it. But then this also has a tilt mechanism for tuning. As you can see, if I'm, tu if I'm moving this little wheel, the distance increases and that will give you more prominence detail. Uh, usually it's a little bit past the default one. I plan to do something else with it. So if I take this off, one moment, don't want to really screw the actual refractor off. So here we go. What I bought this for was to use this along with this and create a powerful double stack lower than 0.5 angstrom bandpass. Uh, system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an adapter, which is going to encapsulate this, put it behind the Daystar, have a photoex amplifier at the front, and then leave this as probably like it is, a little bit tilted, and then put this either at uh, 1.8 or 2.8 uh, pH alpha frequency and get some cool details. I'm waiting for the part from RDF, RDF camera on this and this is gonna be my system. But for now, let's take a look at this little guy. Let me put this back on here. It's also got a sparkling paint job, which is nice. Again, I have, this is a PST Eplon. It comes from the Coronado PST telescope. Look at the aperture difference. I mean, you're talking about at least two X. And that's why this is one of the most exciting solar equipment launches of the year. It's out of stock. You can barely find one. I think Red Carpet Telescopes has one. Uh, I got it from Agena Astro, one of their last ones. This also comes with a blocking filter that will help you block light because this is, it requires it. This is a BF600. It's very small. It's for a 600 millimeter telescope. You can get it with a BF500, even smaller, or a BF1200, which is, you know, pretty good. The bigger the blocking filter, the bigger the telescope and focal length that you can use it on. I use this camera from Player One. It's a really nice little camera. Player One does incredible things like have an integrated tilt plate on the front of the camera where you see these screws. They make energy rejection filters and they also have amazing build quality and really good customer support. So this is the system. I bought it to double stack it. I didn't think this would be a really good system. I tried the PSD and I wasn't pleasantly surprised. It's a mess, it's old, and it's not even close to being as good. Usually I'm used to using things like these. Tilt, this tilter here that tilts the sensor, cooling so the camera stays alive. This is a must for the Daystar, a Barlow. It operates at F30+, plus, so I don't have an F30 telescope, so mine are pretty fast. So it always has to be amplified by three, four times at least. So I thought maybe I even double stack these to see some details, but unless I can get a bar and the little scope, it won't work. Let's look at what I got though. So let me go to PixInsight and let me go here and show you guys what I used. I bought off my wife Star Trucker because, well, it's light. I eyeballed Polaris, well, eyeballed, just guessed what Polaris could be. I have two other mounts polar uh, line. So I have an idea where towards Polaris. I put in the altitude at 37, which is what I am, and I hope for the best. Um, I use this 4NX Life Track, Life Track 2. It's a really, really good tracking mount. It has one single problem. You can only track for two hours at a time. 
because this this actual friction motor hits a stop. But it is the most accurate start tracker you will ever find. One arc second periodic error blows it blows everything else out of the water. It is a friction drive. It makes a really funny kind of slot machine sound. We usually use it in the desert, and it's it's, it's very funny. I powered it with an external battery from EcoFlow. Um, I was actually trying to double stack here, as you can see, I'm at 65, 61.8, which is the lowest I can make this uh, uh, quantum go. The default frequency for each alpha is 65, 62.8. Now, this requires power because it heats or uh, cools the actual quantum. Uh, my computer is stored in a, basically a plastic bucket, so it doesn't overheat. And I also try to sit in the shade. Whenever you do solar photography, your solar, the sun is not your friend. So let's look at the video. So I recorded two videos, one with uh, the sensor that I finally decided to image with, which is that Neptune camera or the, Z, or the IMX178 chip, which is not really the most common. It's a good planetary camera. The seeing was pretty choppy because you can see at 40 millimeters, it kind of uh, shows it. And then, then another one with the ZWO174, which is a larger chip. It's too small. I mean, this is two megapixels, so I couldn't really use this as much. So let's look at the data. So here's a single image. Predictably, it's not the best, but I had enough that I could use. I think it was 30, 3,000 frames that I took, and I used about 50%. Let's look at the stack. Uh, the stack is this. So as you can see, the details start showing up, but still it's not sharp and it has some issues. I actually used Astra imaging tool to clean it up. Let's see what happened. So after I cleaned it up with Astra imaging tool, I did some deconvolution. I did some uh, waveform sharpening, which made it, made it make, which improved the sharpness, excuse me. And then after that, I took it into Photoshop where this is what it turned out to be. In Photoshop, I use things like camera raw filter, high pass filters, and a bunch of other things to make it work. I love the details on the surface. I tuned it a little bit to see what the difference is. It's pretty much sharp across the entire sensor. I'm really impressed with this. You can even see prominences, which is at 40 millimeters. Impressive, so Lunt, amazing job. I bought this myself. It's not a promotional advertisement for Lunt. They just make incredible Atlants, uh, just like Daystar. So I, also, I give people shout out if I can. Now, lastly, I took this image and amplified. I kind of increased the resolution using the tool. Nobody knows about Topaz <laughs> Gigapixel. Uh, so it, it did provide some more details. It does do a really good job of solar. I think I boost the resolution by two or four X here. And it really created a good image. I like it. It's simple, it's clean, it's the full disk. So as the solar maximum comes closer to, which is the solar maximum will be in 2025, I'll be using this along with the 90 millimeter Coronado, or I have a 152 refractor. The 152 I can't use probably 300 days out of the year, or maybe, maybe three days a year because of the seeing. So this is a really good low scope you can purchase if you want to get into solar. It's really affordable. I think it's about 700 bucks. Uh, they're all sold out. So good luck if you're trying to find one. And yeah, if you want to get into solar, this might be the easiest way. Find a mono camera, that's key. Don't use color cameras, they're not good for the sun. You'll lose a lot of your data. So a mono camera, a small chip, because this is a small telescope and they match. So good luck with that. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to me on YouTube or other social media platforms. Until next time. Bye.